Hey, it's Bullfrog here. Uh, I'm not going to look at the camera. I'm going to look at the road here. I am on my way to pick up a cow, actually a bull, but cattle, a uh, mini zebu bull. A uh, zebu or mini zebu is a breed of cow that comes from India, and it is known to thrive in Florida. They thrive on weeds and a lot of really rough forage that a lot of um, more mainstream breeds of cows um, will not eat. You can almost think of them as like a cow version of a goat. Uh, if you know me, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a big believer in self-sustaining livestock. Livestock that you can turn out to take care of itself with minimal human intervention. And um, that's the kind of livestock that you will actually live off of if push comes to shove and, you know, the supply lines go down and the feed stores close down and you no longer have, um, you know, nice, convenient, prepackaged feed to feed your animals and medications. You need animals that are disease resistant. You need animals that can live on their own with whatever resources you have available to give them. And uh, that could mean that in your prep plans, you actually tailor, you know, to the to what you can. If you're if you're looking to buy a place, you tailor your land to match the livestock you're going to put on it. But it also means that once you have your land, your farm established, you then tailor your livestock and your crops to to what works best on that land and that habitat and that climate. You know, I, I'm a big believer in that as it relates to the chickens, and so I am with the cattle. Now, I've never raised a zebu. Um, zebu are not Florida natives. They just they have been introduced to Florida and they thrive here. Um, there is a cracker cow, just like you know I have my cracker game chickens. There is a, a recognized cracker cow that still exists in Florida in small numbers, and they are descendants of cows that the Spanish brought that actually are closely re related to Texas Longhorns. It may surprise you to know it was Florida, not Texas, that was the main supplier of beef to the nation for the formative years of the United States, not Texas. I'm not doing cracker cows for a couple reasons. Uh, one reason is that they're highly aggressive, and I, I don't want that. I don't want an aggressive cow. I don't like an aggressive cow. Another reason is they are a small cow relative to other established breeds, but they are still a large full-frame cow. I want mini cows because the way I'm going to be raising cows on my farm is I'm going to be doing a, a rotational system where I have an electric fence. I have a quarter acre of electric fence, and I'm going to be expanding that as, as the cows begin reproducing and making calves, but for right now I'm starting with a quarter acre, and I'm going to move that fence all around my blueberry fields, and my blueberry fields actually have pretty good pasture between the rows, and um, I'm going to let them graze on that. Now, I say it's good pasture. It is um, wild woods grass of various kinds. It's not traditional monoculture pasture, so I need breeds that, that can thrive on that, and the zebu is one of those breeds. Now, that's my bull. Now, I already got my cow. I traded uh, a dozen cracker chickens for my cow. My cow is a um, mini jersey. And, and to call her a mini jersey, she, she's right on the borderline between being just a, a, a what they call a low-line jersey and a mini jersey. She's small. She's a lot smaller than a regular cow, but she's bigger than, you'll see some minis that are like dog size. She's a lot bigger than that. So she's something in between. The Zebu that I'm getting today is going to be a smaller one, but he, he I think he's going to be a good match for her. And, um, uh, and, and when, as they make offspring. Uh, I'll probably keep first generation heifers uh, for my herd. It, it'll be, yeah, he'll be breeding his daughters, but it won't hurt to do it for one generation, being that they're two different separate unrelated breeds because their genetics will still be pretty fresh. Um, but after that, you don't, I don't really want to inbreed them beyond one generation. So I'll breed him to my jersey you know, save a couple of heifers off of that, get a get a herd of two or three more cows, and then after that, I'm like, we're gonna just start eating the, you know, eating the calves as they grow up. You know, we'll make steers out of the little bulls, you know, and um, and that'll be one of our main sources of red meat coming up. I'm not gonna film picking up the cow here just because I think that's gonna be disrespectful to the farmer I'm getting them from. Um, but if all looks well with them, I'm gonna. Uh, 
I'll, I'll get this bull and uh, get him back home in a little bit, and then I'll show them to you. I'll show you what I'm doing in terms of my cows. So here's how I'm spending a lazy Sunday afternoon. Um, I tell you, it's relaxing just to come out here and watch these cows feed. Uh, they just, you know, they just sort of do their thing. And I can't offer a lot of commentary yet because I haven't, you know, had these but for a short time. And um, I have a lot of learning to do. I would consider myself a novice when it comes to cattle. Um, I grew up with cattle and I know how to take care of cattle. So I'm not a novice in that regard, but I am a novice as it comes to uh, understanding a lot about their biology and their behavior and why they do what they do. Um, I have a tendency to, to look at them just like I do my chickens and think about them as wild animals that we've domesticated more so than kind of taking their domestication for granted. I want to understand their social structure, their breeding, their feeding. I want to know why they do what they do. Um, I want to understand their genetics better. Uh, I've, I've been actually doing some reading. I did not know where our domestic cows came from. They came from a species called the Ark. Which, if you read in the Bible, it's actually, um, when the Bible's talking about the ox or the wild ox, that's what it's referring to most of the time. And yeah, we have wild cattle today, like bison and buffalo of different kind, but the aurux were very much like our domestic cattle, but bigger, you know, and wild acting. Probably the closest thing that acts like them today are the wild cows in Hawaii, the feral cows there that, that if you ever watch anyone hunt those cows, they actually act like white-tailed deer. They rub trees and make what we call pollens. Um, I think Yankees, you call them scrapes. But, you know, they, they behave a lot like deer. And the Oryx, I think, did so. And they lived in the woods in Europe and sent throughout Central Asia and Northern Africa. And the Oryx actually didn't go extinct till the 1600s. Um, so we do have some good historical accounts as to how they behaved and what they look like. So that's fascinating to me. And I want to learn more about that and then look at domestic cow behavior in that context, just like I look at chicken behavior through the context of the wild jungle fowl, the red wild jungle fowl. So um, these are some pretty cows. I'm very pleased with them. Uh, but I'll, uh, like I said, I'm going to just sort of wait. I uh, get to know them a little bit better before I offer a lot of commentary on them. All right, it's late in the evening now. I thought I'd finish this video. Uh, I've been doing some projects. I put a, um, a roosting house in the uh, cow paddock for the liege. Uh, it might take a couple nights of me training them to go in there, but uh, wanted to, um, I hear my daughter calling me. I uh, wanted to uh, go ahead and get one up and get them trained to use it. But, uh, but you can see the cows are behind me and they're eating acorns off of the uh, little water oak that's in there. On uh, one of my family farms uh, that we had growing up, we had uh, an 80 acre farm, a 20 acre farm, and um, some, uh, and then some other farms if you count extend family. But my immediate family had uh, a total of, um, of, a, of 100 acres spread out between two farms that I grew up on. And um, one of those uh, farms, uh, had about 30 head of cow on it. That was the 80 acre farm and a lot of woods. And the only care that we gave those cows was that, uh, we would, um, uh, drive out uh, a couple times a week just to check to make sure their waters were working. And during the winter time, we would throw bale hay out there every so often, but they otherwise took care of themselves. And then they weren't anything special. They were just mixed breed cows, but it was very good pasture land and woodland. And we didn't overstock it for the size of property so that they had good brows uh, year round. And uh, this is gonna be a little bit different because this is a quarter acre that I have right here. Uh, I will be moving it around um, 
around the blueberries uh, to give them fresh pasture <clears throat> every few weeks. Uh, I'm not quite sure how long it's gonna take these two to uh, eat this out, but um, I might expand this. I can get a couple more rolls of fence and make it half an acre. But anyhow, uh, I'm real curious to see how these leaves do out here. Uh, I'm not going to give them any supplemental feed. I'm going to just let them eat what they pick up after the cows. Uh, I am noticing that uh, all of the animals out here seem to love cow dung. The, the dogs here have been eating it ever since we've had the cows out here. And um, the, come, come here, baby. And uh, the, uh, the chickens love to eat it. So, um, so we're going to see what, how they do just kind of feeding behind the cows here. I really think these leaves might be good pasture birds in terms of, because they, they can fly, but I don't think they're gonna fly over this electric fence. Come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here. Daddy, my cows. Yes, they are your cows, baby. Hi. Look, look, we're, we're, we're filming for YouTube right now. Say hey to the people on YouTube. Hey. <laughs> Wave at them. Say hey. Hey. <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, uh, anyhow, this has been Bullfrog. Thank you for watching. I'll give you updates on the cows. <laughs> Here, you just push back on Brunson. You show him who's boss, baby. You're his boss. My boss. Yes, you're the boss of Brunson. My boss. Yes, you're the boss. And Brunson is your Brunson. So, um, anyhow, this has been Bull for All. Thank you for watching. Say bye-bye, Tadpole. Say bye-bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>